Today, I'd like to explore one of the eight Bamen. I guess eight is redundant there because Ba means eight in, in Chinese. It's one of the eight gates or eight energies, primary energies of Taiji Chuan. So we've done a bunch of them. We've done like six of the other ones. And maybe we'll, we'll play around with, uh, with those, just do a, a quick drive-by with, uh, with those. But get into one we have not explored yet. And uh, that is Chia, which is splitting energy or rending. And uh, so the um, getting, getting the, the feeling of, of, of what that means. And just to um, touch on, on what the, the, those eight energies are, the eight gates, the, um, the, the, the eight primary forms or energies that, that animate uh, Taiji Tran. And usually they're represented in terms of martial arts technique. So you get your your ward off, which is you know you 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 think of uh, uh, you know a the power of 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 being able to to actually you know repel you know using using your your forearm you know and that's that's sort of a that's a that's the I you know the the outer expression of that, but the inner energy is pungjin. And a jin is a way of expressing energy through the body and directing it by consciousness. And so it's not just an energy, it's an actual physical expression of that energy. It's where, you know, a jin is where the, the chi and the li, the physical muscular expression, they get together and do a little dance. So it goes a step many steps beyond just merely feeling your chi. It's like saying, okay, I'm feeling my chi now, I got that, and now I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to interact with the world, interact with the environment in a way that uses this. And it's through this, this chin that we embody the energy and it opens the gate to, to something more. It opens the gate to, in my, in my language, super consciousness, that is knowing without thinking, the ability to body, mind, spirit integration is, you know, that uh, that's occurring there. You know, in the, in the Young family secret transmissions, they talk about, you know, first you must understand conscious feeling and doing then you understand, then you learn to understand energy. And then from that, from understanding energy, then you have spiritual illumination. And so in, in, in their language, the martial expression and the spiritual illumination are one and the same. That's the, they are, they are two sides of the same coin. Um, so we get this by, by exploring that physical expression of the energy, we then access body, mind, spirit integration. And then it opens the gate to this expanded awareness that comes from engaging, in the, the engaging life in a state of wholeness. So we have, you know, the ward off energy, which is Pong Jin. We have uh, roll back energy, which is Lu Jin. So Pong Jin is kind of an up and out energy and Lu Jin is oftentimes a down and in energy. It's a very yin energy. Pong is very yang. And then we have Qi or uh, press energy where we're combining two yang forces and expanding outward and which case the body becomes the yin part of that equation. And then on Jin, which is oftentimes interpreted as push, but it's a pressing down and then out, a reaching out. And so we get that on energy, A-N. 
And then comes um, one we haven't touched on yet, which is uh, oftentimes uh, translated as pluck, which is uh, uh, sia. And it's, uh, or sai, I guess, uh, sai probably is the way to, to pronounce it. Uh, kind of um, the C is, is spelled C-A-I, but it's like, it's pronounced like with a T-S, uh, tsai. And, um, and that is it's a, an abrupt, very yin energy where it's like the, the bottom dropping out of, of, you know, like a trap door. <clears throat> You know, and there's, and so they it just, it's, it's a very light thing. It's a very light pull down, but it's the energy causes you to just fall into nothingness. Then we're going to get to, then comes uh, Jia, which is uh, splitting energy. And that's the one we're going to talk about tonight. And then we kind of skipped ahead to Elbow Jin or Joe. And that's, uh, Usually it's translated as, as like an elbow strike, like a martial arts move. But the energy of it is something which is really kind of woo-woo in that it is whenever you reach with your elbow, something which I've emphasized a lot in these talks, is you create this whole body integration that takes you even farther than the energetic coherence that you get from, from say pointing with your index finger or something like that. It takes you into something which gets very, very big and it amplifies every other gin. So it's kind of a straw that stirs the drink. And then the last one is also usually translated as a shoulder strike where you're, you're smacking something with your shoulder. And, um, but the energy of it, the, the chin of it is, is that shoulder energy is, um, is an opening, which uh, even, even more than the, than the elbow, it amplifies the whole system. So when we get, we get to the last one there, it's like it becomes more of a, uh, uh, an integrative factor rather than actually a weapon that you can use in and of itself. It just sort of turns up the volume to 11 on all the other gins. So by being combining your elbow gin with your shoulder gin, you, you remove kinks in the hose, particularly through the shoulders, and you create this circuit that allows you to express the other energies in a, in a much more um, expansive and powerful fashion. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll take a quick walk through, through those uh, whenever we stand up, but just to uh, talk about the uh, Jia energy, which is this splitting. So the idea of, of split is that we have, we're expanding in two different directions. That was Yang's going this way, Yang's going that way. And we're like very similar to the press where you're, you're bringing the Yangs together. This is their, oh, we're taking them apart. We're, we're splitting them. We're shooting them out. And so we had these things which were unified, quantumly entangled. And then we, we split them apart and they are, they are coordinating at, at, at the distance there. So on a uh, energetic level, we have this, these things that are, that are going in opposite directions, which then create a, um, uh, a disturbance in, in whoever is, is receiving the, that energy. But it's also from a, you know, from you as your, uh, just as a person exploring these things, it creates a level of integration which you don't see in the other ones. So it's a, a maybe not a level, but a type of inter integration. So there's lots of different ways to, to play with these energies. And this is one that says, okay, we're doing something, we're, we're doing this splitting thing now. 
on a physical level, what you're asking your body to do is to bring your awareness simultaneously to both arms, both hands, and, and ask them to, to go in opposite directions. And doing so, whenever you, whenever I move my right hand, my right arm, I'm using the left side of my brain to do that. And so it's it's directing directing my motor functions through the through the through my uh, through my arm. And the more I practice that, the more I do it consciously, intentionally, conscious feeling and movement, the more it creates uh, new neural connections and makes it easier and easier to do. That is, it reduces the the ramp up time in order to be able to actually get gin into that hand. Whenever I'm moving my left hand in the opposite direction, I'm using the right side of my brain, the right hemisphere. And when I'm doing them together, I'm using both and I have to coordinate that. And so my brain then has to go to another level in order to be able to integrate those two. And it's funny how many students of mine talk about having difficulty with right and left, being able to, to someone says, move your right arm, and they have to kind of think about it in order to, to feel which arm is right and which one is left. We want to narrow the gap on that. We want to be able to have that as instantaneous as possible, where, you know, it's just like reading notes and music. It's like, you don't want to have to think about whether or not that's an F sharp or an F natural, you know, whatever. You want to get it, uh, you want to be able to identify that immediately and boom, you're, you're, you play the note and you're on to the next one. Same thing with you know, left, right. You want to be able to, oh, to, to do that. And when you do that, we take this hemispheric synchronization to another level where you are integrating the eye of flesh and the eye of mind, and you're allowing the abstract notion of left and right, which is really just a relational thing. It's like with, with reference to what, you know? And so you don't want to have to get into those philosophical questions whenever you say left or right, you just want it to go, oh, right, and, and be able to do that. And when you can do that, you start to create these new neural pathways and and it quickens your your response time it allows you to to respond much more much more efficiently so to the point where you don't have to think about it then you enter into a state of flow because you're you're just doing this thing and it doesn't there's no lag time between the thought and the execution and that's true of all these jins that is, we practice them, we do our gong fu, our, our diligent effort over time in order to create these neural connections, in order to be able to immediately bring the stuff into being. So getting that the capacity to feel both and take your time with it because it allows your, your nervous system to catch up with what it is you're trying to do. Similarly, if, it, if you don't take the time, you, you, know, you kind of do a drive-by. You say, oh yeah, I know that thing. I got the words for that song, and, but you don't know the tune. You can't sing it. You, know, you, you, you can kind of, yeah, yeah. You can hum along, but maybe you're not quite sure what comes after what. But you want to get it so that you 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 know the words, you know the tune, and you can you can do the uh, you can play the music. So the um, we're gonna translate all this into some doing, which will include some heightened energetic awareness as we play around with that. And uh, uh, before we go forward, uh, please, any questions or uh, thoughts? Anybody? We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. 
Okay. Peter, you, you, some, you, I can't. Oh, are you, I could just I say briefly I, that, this, that this is really great to be doing after the discussion we had Sunday night about how gin, development of gin can, um, can uh, enhance the larger um, spiritual integration, body, mind, spirit integration. Yeah, so it's just extremely interesting. Great, great, wonderful. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's stand up. Okay, so first we're going to establish our three pillars. Feel the balls of your feet along the big toe line. Feel your, allow your weight to settle down Knees are soft, you're sinking down, releasing down into your, into your legs, feeling the yin aspect of your leg muscles doing the job of supporting you. You have, you're no longer pushing away from the earth. You're relaxing down. The weight is spread throughout the foot, but you're particularly focusing on the balls of the feet. Now reach with the crown of your head. Tuck in your chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Feel that reaching up even as your body is sinking down. So already we're splitting. We're moving the energy in opposite directions. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Allow your pelvis to level out. And as you do that, notice if you, if that shifts your weight back into your heels, you want to avoid that. And just consciously sense the balls of your feet again, even as you release your lower back. Reach with your elbows, open the shoulders. Point and reach with your index fingers. Feel the energetic coherence. Now push away from the earth. We're gonna get some qua here. You push away so you feel that muscular ex uh, contraction as you push away and then uh, you release down and spiral down to the left and turn to the right and back to center. So what we've done here is we've gotten Sung Kwa. We've released the uh, tension in the hip joints. So the Kwa is where the the junction point right here at the inguinal crease where the thigh meets the torso. And technically qua is the hip joint itself, but the point we're focusing on, the, the functional point is that inguinal crease. Feel the, feel your thumbs. Maybe wiggle them a little bit just to get that feeling of it. The, um, on the inside of the thumb, there is the, um, on the actually on the, yeah, the, the outside of the thumb is the uh, uh, lung meridian. 
feel your middle finger. You wiggle that, and that's uh, along that is your pericardium meridian. And then feel the little finger and the heart meridian is on the little finger. So we have those three, those three different meridians there in the hands. These are all young meridians and the energy from the young meridians goes down. It's extending down into your, through your feet and into the earth. So just standing there like that and feeling those three those three meridians, those three fingers right now, you can feel the energy in your hands. You might be feeling some heat, tingling, pulsing, a sense of fullness. You can feel it up your arms. So these are your arms, shoulder, upper chest, these young meridians. Now in your feet, on the, on the big toe, we have both the spleen and the, the big toe line. We have uh, the spleen and the liver meridians. And in the uh, ball of the, uh, in the bubbling well point, the center of the foot, we have the kidney meridian. So those three points there, you wanna connect those up with the three points in your hands. Now those, the three ones in your feet, the liver, spleen, and kidney, those are all yin meridians and their energy goes up, it rises. So we're gonna do a, uh, start off with a little exercise we, we did last week where we are holding poles in opposition. That is, we're using the opposition of the yin meridians in the feet, energy coming up, and the yang meridians in your hands, going down, holding those in opposition to create kind of a bellows effect or a, a turbine effect. This is how we move from a stasis, uh, uh, a combination, uh, uh, an equilibrium and disturb that piece to create energy. This is just one way of doing it, but it's a way that we're going to kind of play with now. So get the idea of all those meridians. Now let that go. Your body now has, has all it needs to do it, to let the energy go where it needs to go. Rotate your palms, your forearms, palms forward. And carry the chi, lifting, feel the weight of the air pressing down as if you're moving through a very viscous fluid. Maybe water, maybe something even more. You're carrying and as you're doing that, you're sinking down, releasing down into your legs, into your feet. So the yang chi is coming down, the yin chi is coming up. Feel that separation. Now rotate your palms down. When you press down with your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, and come up, your body rises as you push down. And 
Rotate forearms, palms up. Carry and sink. Sinking down as you carry, feel the viscosity of the air. Feel space itself as being a super dense but super fluid medium. Sink. Hands come up to head height. Reaching upward as your body sinks. Reach with your elbows, open your shoulders. Reach with the wrists. Rotate the palms down. And keep your hands up, but as you're press down, your body comes up. Don't move your hands, just press down and feel your body rising. So feel those poles in opposition. Now reach forward with your hands and pull back with your body. What we're doing here is, is kind of basic Ichuan stuff. Getting used to the idea of what it feels like to create energy by holding poles in opposition. Now pull back with your hands without moving them and reach forward with your body without moving it. And feel the potentiality that you're generating even though you're not moving. This is being created by your mind by holding the poles in opposition. Now press your hands together without moving them and feel the space between your hands. Feel the chi ball that you're creating by holding those poles in opposition. In the center of your palm, there is the, the Lao Gung points and they're, uh, they're on the pericardium meridian. So we using that as, uh, as our point there, that middle finger. So feel the chi ball that you're creating by doing that. Now we're gonna take that chi ball, we're gonna stretch it going to pull out with your hands and expand that chi ball without moving. Now rotate the palms. And press down and rise as you press down. Feel the viscosity. Now allow everything to sink but the crown point of your head. Reach up with your knee one and everything else drop. Feel the yin. Right now it's about 90% yin and 10% yang as you're reaching up with the crown. And feel the heaviness of your body as you do that. Now, Push away from the earth, you're coming up and sinking down with your crown, with the crown of your head. You're dropping that down and pushing up. We're going 90% young, 10% yin. Now let all that go. Now just 
occupy the space that you're in. Very relaxed, very soon. Allowing the energy to do what it does. Letting it find its own way. Step in, take a deep breath. And as you press down, disappear the energy. Let it go. Dissolve into the emptiness. Okay, so now we're gonna take that and put your right foot forward. Let me just do a, a quick run through some of the energies that we've played with already. And feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down, release the quad spiraling down. So you're releasing down, sinking. Reach with the crown of your head. So you're reaching up with that and down with your body. Says very soon. Set your elbow. Reach with your wrist. And turn your body. So your arm is curved in front of your chest. So here we have, this is a ward off posture. We want to feel in opposition here. We want to feel the energy coming up and out through the right arm. So there's an expansive quality, the Pong Jin in the Wardoff posture. And to counterbalance it, we have the yin of the left hand reaching down. So it's connecting up with the earth. This is expanding outward and a big expanding circle. We have Pong Jin. That's that first one. Bring your hands down. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that right claw. Set the right elbow, right wrist, and Pull down with the left hand and reach out with the right wrist. Arm is curved in front of the chest. So notice when we do this, when we stroke the, the sparrow's tail or the bird's tail, we are splitting. The energy, the right arm is going this way, left hand going down. We have, we have some split energy and you find splitting energy in, throughout any Taiji form. But that's a uh, one place where it's, you can see it right away. So now turn to your right, reach out with your hands, sink into that right claw. Now sink into your left claw, feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the right and then turn as you turn reaching with both elbows, with the wrists, reaching with your hands. Here we have rollback energy or Lu. So the energy is coming down and in. And in practice, you kind of actually want it to go down and out. You want to deflect it away from the body, but the energy has a yin quality to it. So go back into your right leg, turn to the right, sink into your left and then turn. 
Feel that energy going down in that very yin energy. But the arms are reaching out so that's a yang expansion to coordinate and integrate with uh, the yin sung. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the, spiral down to the left, bring your, your arms up. So very relaxed, reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, and then turn and bring your hands together. You bring your left palm to your right, the heel of your right hand. There's a lot of ways to do a, 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 a press, but uh, this is the Ji Jin. And so the, here we have two yangs. They're expanding and directing outward. But the yin here is in the sung, into, into, the, into the legs. So here we have we're probably 80% yang and 20% yin in this move. Whereas in Lu, in rollback, we're about 80% yin and 20% yang. Separate, come down, we'll do that again. Sink, arms come up and turn. Feel the up and out energy going through both the arms, unifying and directing outward. At the same time, you're releasing down, down into your legs, into your qua, your very sung there, very yin there. Now we'll go to push on energy. This is the fourth. You separate the hands and sink down into your left leg, hands pressed down but they're, they're kind of being pulled down. You feel that same kind of viscosity there we did in the, in the Qigong exercise. Are we feeling that hands coming down? There's a, a compression, but it's an energetic one, not a muscular one. And then you sink into the front leg, release down into the quad, and then reach out with the hands. Do that again. So we're going to push or on energy, which is and separate and come down, sink down. Everything sinking down, 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 down. Yin, very yin, and then uh, push, which is a reaching outward. It's mostly yang. We're going to skip over the next two, and then we're going to go to, just from here, we're going to Zhou energy, which is elbow jin. And just reach out with your elbows and feel that we're actually going to combine the elbow and the shoulder because they're kind of coordinated there. By reaching out with the elbows, you're opening the shoulders and you're creating this amplification of, of your energy. So reach with the elbows, reach with the shoulders, feel that. And feel yourself reaching out with your hands without moving and feel the energy that's moving through. So the yin chi of the earth is coming up through your feet, up through and expressing itself out through your hands. The yang chi is coming down through your body, through your feet and into the earth. So we create this continuing system, an open system where you are in, you're exchanging with your environment. You're exchanging with the big chi, the chi of the earth, the chi of the sky, of the heavens and you are, it's constantly replenishing your resources. So let's get to the one we uh, were talking about here. We got a little time still. Okay, so we're talking about Chia. And to this one, 
go back into um, a slightly wider than shoulder width stance. And just pause a moment, re-establish your three pillars. Feel the balls of your feet, knees are soft, you're sinking down, push away and sink down. Feel your sung kwa, reach with your elbows, your fingers, open your shoulder joints, reach with the crown of your head and feel that whole body integration. Also notice your mental state right now. Notice your state of being, calm, centered, relaxed. Your mind is clear. And we've shifted into a, a state of wholeness and it's an ever expanding state. So there's never any final destination on, on wholeness. There's just the wholeness of, of the form I'm in now, the wholeness of whatever I can bring into consciousness now. Now feel the ball, the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the the left, left hand comes up, right hand. So as if you're holding a big ball on your, you know, on the, on the left side there. Keep your hands, notice how my hands are right along my center line, right along, you know, the button line there of my, of my shirt. So I want to feel that the hands are up from the body a little bit. You don't want to have a collapsed posture. You want to feel, you want to reach with those elbows. You want to feel that elbow gin, the shoulder gin. You want to feel those, those energies, those, those, uh, those gates are open. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that right leg. And very slowly, to turn the body and as you do that reach with both elbows feel that opening feel your right hand moving to the right your left hand moving to the left feel the relationship between those two hands so just like we created the chi ball and compress the energy. Now we're expanding it. Very young. But we're also splitting. We want to feel those two working simultaneously. Your weight is predominantly in your right leg. For our purposes here, that's where we want it. We want about 70% in the right leg, 30% in the left. And feel that expansion. Re feel your elbows extending and opening your shoulder joints. Feel the lengthening of your sinews, your connective tissue as you open up. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right. As you do that, the left hand comes down, the right hand rotates, palm down. So now we're in the right leg, and we're holding the ball over the center line. I feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the right. So you're loading up that left quad and now turn, reaching with both elbows, with the wrists. Feel the hands. One of the uh, one of the names for chia is rend. Feel yourself rending this your chi ball. You're taking your your beautifully constructed chi ball and you're ripping it apart. So we can create a bigger energy. Open. Feel your elbows, reach, open your shoulder joints, reach with your fingers, reach with your wrists, reach with the crown of your head, big, big chi, big expansion, big yang. 
Feel that splitting energy, feel the potentiality created between your hands. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Left hand rotates, palm down, right hand reaches underneath, holding the ball again. So we're, we're back holding the ball. We didn't lose it, we just reformulated it. Creating it anew. This time including the splitting energy and making an even denser energy. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and loading up the right claw and turn, reach, open, expand. Feel that lengthening between the shoulders, between the arm, between the hands, everything lengthening, opening, but fully connected, all part of one system. And the hands are the feet, are the top of the head, are the dantian, are, everything is, is all connected up. You're in a state of wholeness. The chi knows what to do, and we're just directing the form that we're expressing it through. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and turn, and reach out. Feel the expansion, feel the density of the space pushing down on your arms, feel the heaviness, reach up at the crown, bring the hands in, feel your elbows, your wrists, your fingers. Rotate. Sink. Very in. Everything down, down, down. Feel the chi in your hands. Feel it circulating throughout your whole body. Feel it in your feet. To the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, step in. Feel the change in the energy as you stepped in. There's a different quality to the, your state of being right now. We talk about first conscious feeling and doing and understanding the chi. So these are the baby steps we're taking to understand the chi. This leading to spiritual illumination. And that's not something that happens sometime in the distance. It's happening right now. That illumination is happening each step of the way, if you follow those principles. Take a deep breath. And press down and disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness.
please have a seat. <laughs> Lynn. I found that wonderful. Um, but also I found that I was becoming increasingly aware of my, the lower energy in the lower part of my body, right? That it was, I was, you know, the yang was leading me to relax increasingly in the, the lower back and let everything go down that way too, which was really, really nice. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you. That's good. Great. Uh, great to hear that. Hey, buddy, Peter. Yeah, uh, wonderful. I think another step for me, I felt, you know, I, was, I didn't get all the coordination of the movement and energy exactly right, but there were moments when I felt more, more of what you're talking about, especially with uh, press, when we were like the yang out with the press and the sinking in the, in the lower body, that opposition. There was, and there was a, a wholeness. There was like a, um, that was very intriguing. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so amazing. Wonderful, thank you, Peter. Scott, you had something? Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, pretty much out of adjectives, so. <laughs> uh, gonna have to go flipping cool. Um, <laughs> Some of what uh, Lynn was talking about is definitely that was definitely helping me. My you know my biggest thing is holding the tension in the hips, and that definitely all of that definitely let me help me release some of that. And Great, feel what it's like to not have that tension in my hips in my lower back. Nice, that's that's wow, that's that's perfect. That's 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 a great thing because that wasn't the primary focus but it was a necessary thing to you know necessary part of the uh, uh of the puzzle there so yeah wonderful it's actually funny because i was going to actually ask you that question tonight but you answered it anyway oh nice <laughs> great keith well, Scott mentioned, you know, he felt it released on hips. If I had one point that I probably had impingement, and I'm sure it's probably just getting the correct form and balance, so I'm not putting undue stress, is I really felt, I felt it in my hips. And, you know, maybe that is just a, a matter of being balanced correctly, but I found myself doing a lot of mechanical, less, less feeling and more mechanical in my lower body. Although I was feeling it, uh, I said, I don't know, strain on the hip. He said, my hips could use some loving, I guess, maybe. Well, that's a really good point you're bringing up there, Keith, because that first step we're talking about here in that formula is conscious feeling and movement. So that hip tension didn't just magically appear. It's something you've been carrying around with you. And this brought it to light it's like oh that's an iceberg out there that we're sailing toward and it uh you know it the fact that you had you know it wasn't covered in fog before you know didn't mean it was less dangerous it just means it was still you know it's still an iceberg so now you say oh yeah this is a thing i have a thing here and uh so you get a chance to to then what do i do about this thing if anything and then you get to play with that. But that conscious of feeling and movement, that is we are intentionally activating our, our sensory and uh, sensory neural network and our motor neural network to be able to then access parts of the part of our awareness that is pre-conscious. 
and bringing that into the light. And that is, is the big step there. Scott. Yeah, it's, um, at least for me, it's, it's like there's a fine line between working on the three pillars and just letting go with your brain and not doing, you know, letting go, letting go mentally, but it's that balance between the mental and the and the physical, and there's a space in the middle there that you gotta that you get to eventually, or you get to lose it. You get to lose the middle. I think it's I think it's beyond. I think it's whenever you you actually when you do that when you do bring conscious awareness to these things, moment by moment, then it enables you to then activate parts of your nervous system which allow for that whole brain integration, which allow for something which is non-physical to occur. So as it opens the door to that spiritual illumination. You, know, you used a music analogy earlier about being able to pick things up to instantly go to a point. Uh, getting in that position is kind of like, felt like using a music analogy of, of pressing down on a string correctly for it doesn't buzz and it doesn't hammer, but you get the tone. Cause like, I think, uh, oh, Jonathan or somebody said, uh, that getting touches of the feeling of the energy, I think it was Peter, uh, you know, touched on getting feeling of the energy, but then losing it and getting back to it. I think that's like that touching on the string and just being in the right, I guess, making everything work correctly or being in the right position, I guess. Amen. I don't know. And the first thing is first thing is just becoming consciously aware of it, of what needs to be done. Jonathan, bring us home. You know, it, almost seems, it almost seems in each one that uh, the motor and the sensory almost overlap. It's almost, you know, that sense of, I mean, mind is a movement and it, the body when it moves from the mind is a movement. But when you're doing each one, you're not moving, but you are sort of moving. You almost feel the intersections of where the motor and sensory are like a really one system. That's kind of really amazingly cool. <laughs> <You know. laughs> it is. It is. And, and you can only get that if you separate them. So you can say, this is not that. And now, oh, now we're bringing the two together. And now we're separating right, apart. Right. Now we're bringing them together. And right. kind of, I, 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 that's right. I mean, I, I don't need to penetrate the mystery of the one and the many more than an overlap. The overlap itself is mind-blowing of a sensory and motor here. And, as you're, and, and there's no overlap without the two, as, you would, as, you, as you're saying. So yes, that's very cool. Beautiful. Cool. Okay, we are out of time, folks. Thank you all so much. This has been fun. And uh, 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 see you See you next week. Yeah, Thanks great all. class. Bro. Thank great. you, Maria. It's really, really great. Thank Love you, Maria. Video dude. Bye, guys. <laughs>